doesn't even know you exist. There's a guy who sent on my YouTube, he's commented on like 20 different videos in the last like two weeks. The same guy finally just decided, just blocked him because there was no useful information. It was all just But the, the, these men have become... So let's go into segment three of this, what has caused weak men? Why have men gone so weak and so soft? What is this crisis on masculinity all about? And let's talk about the impact on modern culture. So we're kind of shifting. These are all, again, kind of interconnected, but let's talk about the impact of modern culture. And then that's why that'll lead into the social media, the technology, and all this other stuff. Men really in modern culture, what are men for in the modern world? It's almost like men are not even needed anymore because there's so much ease and comfort out there. Like, what, what does it look like for a man to be in this model? Where do they fit in anymore after all these things we just talked about? Like, where does man even fit in? And modern culture has a lot to fucking answer for when it comes to this. We live in an era where, again, instant gratification is the norm thanks to technology and social media and the convenience culture. This has led to a generation of men who are physically and emotionally weaker than those men in the past, those World War II men that were shipped off or even before that. This constant exposure to just ease and comfort has made men, many men, most men, fucking complacent. And as you know, we say in the military, complacency kills. Do you know that the American Psychological Association, their guidelines suggest that Traditional masculinity traits like stoicism, competitiveness, aggressiveness, assertiveness can be harmful. And that they, they say that that's the problem in the world today. Yet the absence of these traits seems to be what have led to the lack of purpose and direction for many men today. Instead of blaming masculinity itself, we should consider whether its absence is the real freaking problem in this modern culture. We're talking about the impact of modern culture right here in this segment. It's crazy that that's masculinity is now considered naturally violent and domineering and toxic. Again, it's it, the American, what was it? The American Psychological Association has deemed masculinity in general to be considered toxic. And we've already talked about that in the first segment. How those two can't even go together. Masculinity is brain blamed for the problems of the world. The toxic masculinity is blamed for the problems of the world, claiming that male strength and competition and aggression is toxic and dangerous and leading to, to hatefulness and the breakdown of, of the modern family. When it's actually the absence of those things that are what the real problem and danger is and the real thing those those are the, the lack of those things is what's leading to the breakdown of the nuclear family as you want to call it assertiveness independence risk taking is thought of as bad these are bad so instead we medicate boys into fucking submission brainwashing them to go to college and get a miserable ass job stuck in a fucking cubicle for 20, 30, 40, 50 years until you retire to make a little tiny little percent that didn't keep up with inflation. So now you're forced to go get a job anyway after retirement and, and what, wait until you're 65 to start living your fucking life of freedom? That's what you're brainwashed and conditioned to do after you brainwash them to go to college and, and spend all this money and spend the next two decades paying off your college debt. So now you have a job that doesn't even pay you enough to pay off the college that gave you the degree to get the job that you can't pay enough to pay for the college. Think about, think about how fucking twisted that is. And again, I said it, said it in a, uh, another one. We are dependent on our significance as a man on something outside of ourselves. So all these other things are not going to fucking help us. So why are men becoming weaker and weaker? We, we, I told you a lot of these are going to be overlapping and we're going to have to, re, we're going to go dig into the, a few of them a few times. More single mothers. There's less masculine influence. Most teachers are female. 
Most teachers from kindergarten to high school are, are women. So those are who's leading the men. All the young boys are being led by women, probably women who have different thoughts than you, different ideals and goals and ideologies than you. These education in general, the education system and policies and way of doing things lead towards treating boys like defective girls. They're trying to get them to act like girls. And when they don't act like girls, they're told they're wrong or let's go and, and subdue them with some fucking medication at six years old because little Bobby doesn't want to act like little fucking Susie. There's no like recess time and gym time is, is ridiculous and it's shortened or if it's not removed completely. There's no even, even you're not even allowed to have boy only spaces anymore or girl only spaces. Look at the Olympics right now with a dude knocking women out in boxing matches. Fucking crazy. Even the Boy Scouts are now considered like evil because they're not inclusive. It's the Boy Scouts. There's Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. It's pretty straightforward. It's not much for, up for interpretation there. But this is the modern culture. And then, so the, you mix together internet, social media, and lack of strong male male role models and follow this homes. That is, that is toxic. That is toxic bitch assery is what that is. The government, internet, social media, and we're going to go into the technology yard, but actors and rappers and basketball players in culture are taking the place of a father in the home. The streets are taking the place of the father in the home. Jails are taking the place of fathers in the home. Suicide is taking the place of fathers in the home. Think about that. Female teachers for decades, eight hours a day, five days a week, for decades is replacing the father in the home. Women are taking over the masculine roles, both because they're groomed to or told they should be, or it makes you a strong, independent woman when you are leading the household, and that's the way you should be because we want equal rights and all this other stuff. They're forced to step up, maybe, because the man isn't being a man. There's a quote by Elizabeth Elliot says, stand true to your calling to be a man. Real women will always be relieved and grateful when men are willing to be men. I'm going to repeat that one. So it's from a woman saying from me. So don't talk shit to me. Talk shit to old Elizabeth over there. She says, stand true to your calling to be a man. Real women, real women will always be relieved and grateful when men are willing to be men. That means being a provider and a protector, a creator, a builder, a fixer, a bringer of order to the chaos. But instead, the men prefer to keep scrolling the Instagram and the Facebook feed rather than having real and actual conversations with people. There's too much convenience, breeding laziness and depression. They're in schools that are tailored towards, towards girls and led by women. Current education system overall is just massively freaking flawed in what they're teaching, but also how they're teaching it and how they're leading and teaching these young men to act in the world. It's not equipping them to overcome any challenges or, or have any kind of freedom or think for themselves. And this combination of all this stuff in culture is, is creating hopelessness and depression and anxiety and all kinds of mental disorders among, among men, leaving them unequipped and incapable of dealing with day-to-day -day life. Whenever struggles come along or problems come along, they just escape it instead of facing it. They run and hide from it. They avoid it. They make excuses. They don't have any responsibility or accountability for their actions or any actions of their people around them. And this is all part of this crisis and this, this modern crisis on masculinity and really no the family Really, women are no, no longer dependent on marriage or having a man for financial or even motherhood. They're choosing to go off on their own and lead their families by themselves. And 
50%, you could say, can you really blame them? Because there's such weak little bitch ass men out there. Can you really blame them for like, shit, I could be a man better than the man could be a man. So at some point you could understand it because what are they, what are they, what is a crop of men they have to, to, to choose from? But there needs to be a positive male role model there in the picture. You know, men account for three out of four deaths from either suicide or overdose. 75%, probably even more than that now. Probably, I am guarantee it's over 80%. But at least three out of four of suicides and drug overdoses are men. How does that happen? 75% of alcohol abuse and alcoholics are men. Overdoses, men. And because they're told that, that they're pretty much not needed. They're replaceable. The government could replace them. The rappers and the actors and the athletes and, and whoever else can replace them. A check each month can replace them. All they're good for is sending a fucking check each month for their kids. That's what they're told. And usually I'm sure they're getting the, uh, from what it looks like, is they get the short end of the freaking stick when it comes to going to court for, for custody and all this other stuff. And again, it's a strong independent woman versus the deadbeat dad. Like, that's the way it goes. It's a lose-lose situation. So uh, women are groomed to think they don't need men in the world. They don't need that father in the home. But also, I'm going to be on both sides of it, on the, on the a devil's advocate. Maybe men aren't living worthy of running a family. Yeah, maybe there's not many good women out there, but they're also maybe not living life worthy of being a father to the home or to lead a family or to have that good woman. And combine that with what we talked about in the previous segment about the testosterone being low, men not even wanting to have kids, the more too many of the wrong people having most of the kids and too many of the right people not having enough kids. Like this is a recipe for fucking disaster. And this is the modern culture. Past levels of or, or thoughts of masculinity are just considered unacceptable and toxic. Leading a home, creating a family, building a legacy, all seem impossible for men. It seems too difficult. It's too much of an uphill battle that most men are not willing to take because they've been groomed and become so soft and so weak. It's too scary and it's not worth it. Because... Like the, uh, I said earlier, the, the psychological association or whatever, that traditional masculinity is toxic and any competitiveness and dominance or aggression or leading or assertiveness, basically being the man of the house is harmful. It's toxic. And this is really what the modern, in the impact of the modern culture is on manhood, on masculinity. That's, that, this is the modern culture and that is what this, that, that segment, the, you see all these three segments kind of tied in together They're from a little bit different angle, but they are all tied together. So now that we're, since we're talking about modern culture, let's go into the next segment. What is the role of technology and social media? And we, we tapped into it a little bit already, but what is the role of, of technology, social media? When it comes to masculinity. Now, technology and social media have altered how men interact with the world most young men are we said before are growing up with more screen time than ever more screen time than they are with real life experience no they don't even know how to have a conversation they don't know how to shake a fucking hand they give a firm handshake because there's no handshakes online you can hit a little emoji with a little high five or a thumbs up that's the modern day handshake a fucking thumbs up on a little fat thumb on a screen a little button a little emoji is equivalent to a man shaking hands, standing up with eye contact, looking another fucking man in the eye and giving a firm handshake is now replaced with a little thumbs up or a little wave emoji. Hi, dude. What's up, man? Good to meet you. On the fucking internet. Oh, wait, you like that? Don't ever send me an emoji again, kid. My little producer back there snickering about some of my comments. Anyway, this dependency on this, this they, they turn to the internet for validation, 
for advice and it's all misinformation and har- most harmful content, most bullshit. They see something they don't like and quickly jump on there and talk shit about it. I get it every day from the haters. I got it right before we came on here. I saw some new ones and just deleted a bunch of motherfuckers because they're just little boys in man's body. Imagine like being a grown man. You have a job, you have a career, possibly have kids, possibly married, probably divorced, probably kids that don't want to spend much time with you, but 30, 40, 50 years old, imagine, and you scroll the internet to talk shit about things that another man is doing or talking shit and hating on or being obsessed with another man out there that doesn't even know you exist. There's a guy who sent on my YouTube, he's commented on like, 20 different videos in the last like two weeks. The same guy finally just decided, just blocked him because it was no useful information. It was all just bullshit. But these men have become dependent on these digital platforms for validation. They feel feel good about themselves, better about their shitty situation by talking shit to someone else that they don't even know and that doesn't even know they exist. And that still makes them feel better than their current situation. Think about how fucking sick and twisted that is. That them hating and being obsessed on and spending their free time when they say they don't have enough time to go to the gym, don't have time to spend with their kids, don't have time to do whatever else, their hobbies, their passions, or things that they, they, they want to do in life, their goals, their dreams, their fucking destiny. They don't have time for that. But they have time to be obsessed and harass strangers on the internet that don't even know they exist. And that is... Doing that still, as fucking weird as it is, somehow makes them feel better about themselves for that little moment because their life is so much lacking fulfillment and satisfaction and happiness and fun and purpose and intentionality. They're dependent on these digital platforms. It's contributed to a disconnection from fucking reality, a disconnection from consequences, a disconnection from even being a fucking man. It's weakened the traditional masculine qualities because they hide behind the little keyboard and they say, I'll kick your ass, man. I will tomahawk kick you in the head, bro. If I ever see you in real life. And you know what? Maybe some of them would kick my ass. Maybe some of them wouldn't, but it still has weakened the traditional masculine. Like in the old days, you're going to talk all that shit. You're going to have to do it. Nowadays, you could just blabber away on the fucking internet. These, the conveniences of modern life on social media, like food delivery services and streaming platforms and instant access to information. Like give it to me now when your Google search takes more than, it even tells you, it's so fucking sick when you do a Google search and it tells you, I don't know if it does. Does this still tell you how fast the search took? I'm gonna go on Google right now and find out. This is why I want the computer open. Uh, I'm gonna ask about UFC gym. All right, it doesn't do it, but it used to be when you did a search, it told you on your search results how long the search took, and it would say something like 0.0002134 seconds, and meanwhile, whenever you do a search and it comes up and it's not fast enough, you're like, what the fuck is wrong? And this is all contributed to this slow motion, half-ass, sedentary lifestyle, fostering laziness, lack of discipline, lack of energy, lack of fucking fire and passion and purpose as a freaking man. It's a continuous cycle of instant gratification that is undermining the development of patience as a man, the development of resilience as a man. So when the real world kicks you in the fucking nuts and kicks dirt in your face while you're down there and then piles a heap of torsion on top of you, on top of it, because that's the way life works. Likes to pile on the shit. As a man, that's our job to brace for that impact, to bring the order to the chaos, to be the buffer between all that shit and our people. That's part of being a protector. Protector doesn't mean just against the evil and the demons and the person breaking into your home. It's a protector of the bullshit from the world. Yeah, you want to build resilience in your people, but you're also the protector so they're not completely crushed and devastated by it. That's our job to be the sponge to soak up the bullshit. And deal with the, the hardships and the suffering and the sacrifice and the pain in the world with a motherfucking smile on our face. And that's the conveniences of modern day life. It's an instant gratification. Technology, fucking Grubhub shit. I'm not going to bullshit you. I use Grubhub, but I use these things and there's Uber Eats and Amazon Prime and two-day shipping and overnight shipping. There's even same day. I've ordered shit 
online and got it at my house in like two fucking hours. And there's the Tic Tacs and the stupid dances and Netflix and on demand. Everything's on demand, on demand. Give it to me now. And if I don't get it now, I'm going to cry like a little fucking baby until I get it. And don't get me wrong. I use some of this stuff. I use it as a weapon. I use it when it's going to make me more productive, when it's going to save me time, not as an escape, not to find any kind of self-validation or whatever else. It's a false reality when you fall into that fucking imaginary world dating websites and adult video sites and all this other stuff have caused men to go soft. It's also caused men to, I don't want to say politically correct, but not have any consequences for their actions or their words or the things they do and say. Back back when I was a kid in in the 80s and then going into the 90s, like the stuff that was on TV and in the movies and the things comedians would say, if they did that nowadays, they'd be fucking canceled in a second. Now you have to worry about hurting people's feelings and saying certain words that trigger people. I am triggered, man. I am triggered. And being politically correct. Like, shit, we were watching the Rush Hour movie uh, a couple months ago. I remember seeing stuff on there. And it's something as simple as that. And that's a fairly innocent movie. That's not even one of the worst ones. Even that, I was like, this would never fly nowadays. There's a certain scene where Jackie Chan goes into the, the hood in the, in the black neighborhood and he kind of repeats some of the things he said to one of the guys at the bar. Like nowadays, there he'd, he'd be canceled for that. I'm surprised they even play that movie anymore on, on Netflix just because of the one scene. It's, it's crazy. Comedy movies, forget it. Comedy movies back then, the jokes back then, the comedians back then, the one movie that I gave it to that, that some of the movies nowadays are trying to fight it back, the Bad Dads. It Bad Dads movie just didn't give a fuck. It's like, this is wrong with the world and we're going to overdo it. Yeah, the dude had all kinds of emotional fucking issues and overreacted and had zero control, zero emotional discipline and resilience, but it just was like, you know what? This, here's where the world is fucked up and we're going to totally exploit it. We're going to go overboard and exploiting it. But you can't say certain words nowadays. It's, it's offensive. Got to walk on fucking eggshells. You're going to get canceled. That's the new manhood. That's the new culture. That's what technology has done to us. We want Uber Eats and we want it now. We want, I, I talked about on a podcast the other, the other day in Arizona that we've gotten so comfortable. You, you could go on the app and do your little Grubhub and it says it's going to be there in 45 to 55 minutes. On the 56th minute, you're texting them, where's my food? And you're watching the car. You could watch the car on the fucking map and see how far he is. You call your Uber driver and says he's going to be there in seven minutes. You see him three blocks down and you're sitting there bitching. Why are you sitting still? Why are you not coming here? I need to get where I want to go right now. It's called a red light, motherfucker. That's where he's at. He's coming to get your dumb ass. But we, get, we want such instant gratification. We want the quick fix. We want it right now. And we want the technology to be our daddy. And again, technology is fucking amazing. I am surrounded by it. We are connecting right now through technology. But I'm going to use technology as a weapon. I'm going to use social media as a weapon. I'm going to use, not use it to make me comfortable or to lower my testosterone. I'm going to use it to learn, to connect with people, have meaningful conversations. But I'm also going to do that stuff in the real freaking world and get real world experiences. I'm not going to let social media be my prescription medication. Imagine now combining all that stuff with all the drugs and prescription medications and the low testosterone and the fatherless homes and the lack of presence of fathers in the homes and the way the men are told that masculinity is toxic. Combine all that together and holy fuck, we are screwed. Think about all that. As we scroll into the... 